I'm about to finish my master's degree, but I did a liberal arts bachelor degree first. I was planning to be a high school English teacher eventually, but changed my mind over the course of things. But in that undergraduate degree, there was a lot of nonsense, even though I never took gender studies or anything like that, and even though it was back in 2011, before the rapid decline into SJW nonsense had really accelerated. In the first year of my arts degree, it was compulsory for us to take one of four compulsory subjects in the first two semesters to teach us the underpinnings of thought, theory, and method that we would need for the rest of our degrees. The most popular subject, and the one we were most strongly encouraged to pursue, was called Self and Other. It was a subject about identity, and each week of the program we studied a different component of identity – race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, class. It was the definition of SJW nonsense. I find myself referencing that subject a lot on Twitter, so I've decided to make a series of videos based on the course outline. I'll read the associated readings again, discuss all the core theories, and give you a peek into my notes from the classes, as well as present arguments against what I was taught and explain how my views on these things have changed. My hope is that it will help people who haven't had this foundation in SJW theory to understand how SJWs have been taught to think in colleges and some of the core theories and thinkers that underpin their views. It's also possible that some people studying these things will find these videos, and hopefully this will bring another perspective to what they're learning. Anyway, I'm going to start by showing you the course outline in this video. There's a lot of material in here, so I'm not going to be reading all of it right now, but I'll just read out some choice sections from each week, just to give you a rough idea of what we're going to be covering. This subject is concerned with questions of identity and otherness. In particular, it considers how identities are constructed and maintained through a culturally mediated process in which the dynamic relation between self and other plays a central role. Throughout the subject, a range of identity forms, from individual to gender to ethnicity to nation, are examined. First, we consider the myriad cultural demands and devices that figure in constructing our senses of self and other, including language, leisure, musical and even culinary practices, and beliefs about animals, the body, and cleanliness. Second, through systematic exploration of identity and culture in a range of contexts, from pre-Enlightenment Europe to contemporary Australia, we consider various conceptions of self and other and the ways in which these conceptions are constructed and maintained. Finally, we consider how these culturally mediated conceptions of self and other are translated into material practices of inclusion, exclusion, discrimination, violence, and criminalization. Week 1. Introduction Theories of Self and Other – Interactionism Lecture 1. Introduction to Self and Other Lecture 2. Theories of Self and Other – Interactionism A common assumption shared by each of the participating disciplines in this subject is that the self is intrinsically social. Two of the best known and most influential attempts to offer a theory of the self are interactionism and psychoanalysis. In this lecture, we offer an overview of theories of selfhood and explore their emergence in historical context, in particular as a response to crises wrought by industrialization. However, particular attention is drawn to exploring concepts in the interactionist tradition, Concepts such as the self as an outcome of conversation, both within the self and with others, the idea of reflexivity, the idea of taking the role of the other, and the ideas of selfhood as process, and above all, performance. Tutorial Activity Who am I? The tutor will begin by introducing themselves to the class. Each student will follow this example in a different register by writing a 50-word description of who they are. Students will then pass this self-description to another, the student sitting to their left. Once the self-descriptions have been transferred, each student's other will read out to the class the transferred self-description in the third person. For example, Jane is. While listening to these mediated self-descriptions, the tutorial group should identify both the different markers of identity present in these profiles and any explicit or implicit markers of other. Markers of who I am not. How and why do students speak differently about the tutorial experience and their classmates when in tutorials? 
as against when among friends, when amongst family, and finally in campus toilet graffiti. Discussion questions. Does one's self have a consistent, unchanging core? What is meant by the idea of the social self? According to symbolic interactionists, is selfhood socially determined? What role does human agency play in the shaping of selfhood? What roles do the following play in one's construction and presentation of oneself? Reflexivity, others, front and backstage regions. Week 2. Class. Class, status and distinction. All forms of identity are concerned with hierarchy. However, the issue of hierarchy has been considered in greatest depth in relation to the question of class identity. In its classical formulation by Karl Marx, class refers to the position one held in society relative to the means of production. At the heart of the lecture is an investigation of how hierarchies continue to be produced. It raises questions about the relationships between class and other forms of identification, such as ethnicity, and questions about the complexities of hierarchy maintenance in a globalising and increasingly mobile world. Tutorial Activity Thinking about the contexts you inhabit, Australia, other countries, the university and leisure and workplaces, for example, how do people classify and rank themselves and others? How are the criteria of ranking different and similar in these contexts? Is wealth always the most significant way of marking hierarchy? Discussion questions. What is class? What is status? What is distinction? How do cultural factors work in the production of hierarchies? To what extent are people able to transcend the position in social hierarchies into which they were born? Who is responsible for the maintenance of hierarchies? What challenges does globalisation bring to the understanding of hierarchies? Week 3, Ethnicity. Lecture 1, Ethnicity and Ethnic Identities. Lecture 2, Ethnicity, Nationalism, Gender and Sexuality. It ought now to be clear to students studying this subject that our treatment of identity forms as discrete is a somewhat artificial exercise for the purposes of analytical clarity. In reality, identities are always entangled, sometimes in expected ways and other times less so. One such expected entanglement is that between ethnicity and nationalism. Indeed, both in the real world and in the study of it, the nation is frequently represented as having ethnic roots. A less than expected entanglement is that between ethnic nationalism and the body, gender, and sexuality. However, commonly, nations are gendered, fatherlands and motherlands. Likewise, as the use of rape in processes of ethnic cleansing exemplifies, their realisation as political projects almost always has explicitly and implicitly sexual dimensions. Tutorial activity. Do you ever feel ethnically different, other, List up to five particular contexts and situations in which you personally are made to feel ethnically different. List up to five reasons why this is so. Compare and contrast results as a class. What does this tell you about who is ethnic and about how ethnicity is maintained in everyday life? Discussion questions. Why and under what circumstances do some people ethnically identify and others not? How are ethnicity and tribalism different and related? How are ethnicity and religion different and related? How are ethnicity and nationalism different and related? Provide examples of how the following are used in maintaining ethnic differences and how they are often central issues in ethnic conflicts. Language, music, dress, food, bodily comportment and ideas about the body. What roles can gender play in ethnic conflict? What roles can sexuality play in ethnic conflict? What might be the logics of rape in ethnic conflict? Week 4. Nationality Lecture 1, Nationalism. Lecture 2, National, Rural and Urban Identities. Learning Objectives. To introduce students to the concept of nationalism. To facilitate broad understanding of how national identification has been conceptualised in the social sciences. In particular, to introduce students to the key concepts of primordialism, constructivism, social poetics and cultural intimacy to foster an appreciation of the key tensions at the heart of nationalism as a political project, and an appreciation of how these tensions are mediated in everyday life, to introduce students to the fine-grained ethnographic analysis of nationalism. Tutorial activity. What is distinctive about the national group that you identify with? Is there anything distinctive about your national group that might be regarded as a source of embarrassment? If so, how do you manage that embarrassment in the context of national others, 
and how do you present your national self? Are there differences of a front and backstage variety of which Goffman speaks? Week 5. Theories of Self and Other. Psychoanalysis. Civilization and its discontents. Some framing questions will be, how do we develop an organised, socially valid self, a civilised self, and at what cost to our asocial and antisocial desires, and to the others with whom we form relationships or interact? The two lectures will raise questions about the role of culture in the organisation of the emerging self and its relations with others. We will reconsider the question of whether self-identity is typically stable and static or unstable and in process. We will ask whether the organisation of the self typically relies on psychological and cultural othering. With Fanon and Leah, we will examine what typically happens when one's preferred image of self collapses. Week 6. The Criminalisation of Cultural Difference This week I found particularly horrifying for reasons which I think will become clear to you. Lecture 1. Making the Mutilated Woman in Australia. Lecture 2. The Use of Female Genital Mutilation Law to Label the Self and the Other. In 1996, female circumcision in Australia, and in many parts of the English-speaking world, became criminalised as female genital mutilation. The consultation employed by the Australian government was conducted only in English, with very small time frames to enable responses. Many migrant communities in Australia objected to the use of the law to eradicate the practices and the use of the name female genital mutilation. Their Eritrean community of Australia stated that the time frames and the language barriers meant effective consultation could not take place. One Eritrean woman at a public forum in 1994 stood up and shouted at the Victorian Attorney General, I am not mutilated. Their objections were ignored. In these two lectures, we will consider the passion and outrage that are generated by the mere mention of the name female genital mutilation. We will consider the images that inform ideas about the practices and the role of law in recruiting and consolidating these images to the detriment of the voices of those who experience the practices. We will ask what are the facts and fantasies that inform the anti-female genital mutilation law and why all the outrage? Learning Objectives to understand the many ideas that inform notions of female genital mutilation, to understand the role of law in producing and perpetuating these ideas as reality, to understand the role of fantasy as a psychoanalytic notion in producing images of female genital mutilation, to understand the investment of the Western subject in making anti-female genital mutilation law. Discussion questions. What does it mean to be mutilated or non-mutilated? How might being mutilated affect a subject's capacity to be a political subject in Australia? How much bodily change should we be allowed to do to ourselves? To whom do our bodies belong? The state? Our community? Ourselves? Week 7. Identity and Violence Lecture 1. Memorial Sites and Identity. Auschwitz By considering Auschwitz simultaneously as place, event, symbol and people, we can begin to understand something of the power of memorialization in processes of self and other identification. We will look at ethnographic evidence to show how various identities are formed and reshaped around personal experience, as well as ethnic and national affiliations confronted at such memorial sites. The evidence from the lecture and readings will serve to demonstrate how none of us may distance ourselves from these events and sites in our consciousness, that all of us who participate in the modern world that created the Holocaust and other such atrocities are implicated in those events. Lecture 2, Language and the Holocaust. This lecture considers the role of language and linguistics in constructing the possibility of, and the actual execution of, the violence of the Holocaust. Week 8, Gender. Lecture 1, From Woman as Other to Women and Otherness. This week, we examine the concepts of femininity and masculinity in relation to, and as distinct from, the categories of woman and man. What are the theoretical and social trajectories of the moves from male to man to masculinity, female to woman to femininity? Drawing from the classic text of French existentialist philosopher Simone de Beauvoir, The Second Sex, we consider her insistence on the analytic separation of woman as biological entity, from femininity as social construction, 
Her now famous claim that one is not born, but rather one becomes a woman, emerges from her philosophical formulation that while man is the one, woman is his other. For her, otherness is a fundamental category of human thought. Thus, no group ever sets itself up as the one without at once setting up the other over and against itself. In the context of the one and the other, femininity as other is both negative and inferior. Feminist theory and politics of sexual difference have drawn heavily, if indirectly, on this conceptualization of woman. Indeed, the category of woman became the foundation for significant Western political movements. After exploring in some depth the Beauvoir's contributions, we move to an examination of how the category woman, rather unexpectedly but unsurprisingly, came also to be regarded as the one of white, western, middle-class, heterosexual women in relation to other, black, lesbian, working-class, indigenous, or third-world women, thus undermining and complicating feminist political claims. Lecture 2, Masculinity and its Others R. W. Connell is considered one of the leading theoreticians on gender relations, particularly in the area of the sociology of masculinity. Connell's concept of hegemonic masculinity is one of the most popular and influential in contemporary studies of men, manhood, and masculinity. Connell argued that sex role theory was limited in its capacity to conceptualize power as fundamental to gender relations, as it also failed to grasp change as a fundamental component of gender identity. Hegemonic masculinity, or the maintenance of practices that institutionalize men's dominance over women, places power at the center of its concerns. Hegemonic masculinity is, according to Connell, constructed in relation to several others, women, subordinate masculinities, and marginal masculinities. Connell defines masculinity as simultaneously a place, practices, and effects. Today's lecture also draws on the work of American sociologist Michael Kimmel, who conceptualizes hegemonic masculinity as homophobia. For both Kimmel and Connell, individuals do not have masculinity, rather they move through and produce masculinity by engaging in masculine practices. We analyse some of these practices and their relation to power and change. We also ask about dependence of the masculine self on others. Learning objectives. To consider self-other in relation to constructions of femininity and masculinity, to problematic concepts of male and female, and identify a range of selves and others in the constructions of woman and man. Week 9. Humanity and Animality Self and Other in the Process of Domestication Learning Objectives To examine how notions of the self and other are practically grounded in the process of trying to feel at home in the world. To examine the foundational power of the human-animal differentiation in all conceptualizations of self and other. There is a shame associated with certain biological animal functions of our body that we prefer to perform in hiding, privately or discreetly such as defecating and urinating, blowing one's nose, spitting. We tend to think of this shame as natural. The work of Elias shows how concepts of the civilized body and the hiding of our animality emerge historically. Week 10. Sexuality. Language and Sexuality. In the Wednesday lecture, more recent research on gay and lesbian language informed by post-structuralism and queer theory is introduced. In this period, more clearly even than in earlier periods, discourses of sexuality are shown to intersect with discourses of gender, and interest in the speech and language behaviour of men and women, gay and straight, is seen as a place for potentially queering received gender categories. Discussion Questions Majority identities are usually taken for granted and are seen as normal in day-to-day -day interaction, and are thereby rendered invisible. How do people routinely signal their heterosexual identity in one-on-one day-to-day -on -one -day conversational interaction between people who do not know each other previously, for example, over the telephone? How do gay and lesbian people signal their identity, verbally, in the absence of visual signals, as for example on the telephone? How do they avoid signalling their identity? Why might that be necessary? What advantages might there be for self-identified gay and lesbian people in developing a distinctive and identifiable speech style? Is this any different for other socially marginal groups? Week 11, Modern Identities How does the flexible capitalism of the contemporary period impact upon identities, constructions of the self, and relations with others? Within a culture that spends trust and commitment, rewards flexibility and cooperativeness, and demands individualization, 
Is flexible capitalism merely corrosive, or does it contain the potential for a cosmopolitanism that generates trust and commitment and is thereby emancipatory? Tutorial activities. Consider the ways in which your own or your friends' or family members' work experiences are consistent with Senate's claims about flexible capitalism. Discussion questions. Senate characterizes Rico's dilemma more largely as follows. Short-term capitalism threatens to corrode his character, particularly those qualities of character which bind human beings to one another and furnishes each with a sense of sustainable self. Do you agree with Senate that the culture of the new, more flexible capitalism threatens selfhood and community in the ways he indicates? Week 12. Race. Deconstructing race, colonial desires, and post-colonial interventions. This lecture explores the ways in which race theory and constructions of racial difference have been central to colonialism, colonial ideology, and colonial desires. Racial difference and discourses of racial superiority were used to justify colonialism and also played an important role in the complex historical, social, cultural, economic, and psychological relationship between colonizer and colonized. We explore recent intellectual efforts to deconstruct race, particularly from within post-colonial scholarship and post-colonial criticism that has radically challenged colonial constructions of self and other, and colonial forms of knowledge. We will also consider the way in which colonial desires do not necessarily belong to a particular historical epoch, but are deeply embedded in cultural forms and reproduced in various ways in everyday life from everyday racism to race riots and views on refugees and asylum seekers. Learning objectives. To highlight the social construction of race, to show how whiteness emerges historically and is experienced as a colonial identity, to demonstrate the power and privilege of whiteness in relation to blackness, to deconstruct and demystify its power, to acknowledge its multiple and interconnecting consequences for self and other, to provide an introduction to sociological and critical black feminist analyses of race and difference, including post-colonial interventions into deconstructing race, to consider alternate ways of viewing race or the process of radicalization beyond dichotomous analyses. Discussion questions. Discuss the process of seeing one's identity as power and a potential. Can you come up with examples from your own social and cultural surroundings of friends and families? What is so special about a developmental conception of racism? Can you think of other forms of racism that are not developmental? Is racism specifically linked to whiteness? Can Indigenous people be racist? What defines the social importance of white racism? Why is whiteness not commonly seen as a racial category or an ethnicity? Can whiteness be defined without referring to blackness or otherness? How is whiteness privileged when other identities such as gender, sexuality and nationality are present? Why do issues of whiteness and blackness matter? How do post-colonial interventions challenge our understanding of the construction of race? So that was a lot, and I'm sure you can tell there's a lot to unpack here. But I'm hoping to do this, and I'd like to know what you think about it. So let me know in the comments.